here on Kiwi. Time now is uh, 19 minutes past nine. All about games. It's Games Junkie Gerard Campbell from stuff.co.nz. Let's play tonight. So, they have beaten you, huh? Your quest is over. What if it's only beginning? Some of the most fearsome rulers through history have possessed only a fragment of the Chintamani stone. What would a man become if he possessed the stone itself? Indeed, what would he become? That's a very good question. Gerard Campbell might be able to tell us from Game Junkie blog at stuff.co.nz, twitter.com forward slash Game Junkie NZ. Gerard Campbell, good morning. Good morning, where am I? Uncharted 2 is the name of this one on the PlayStation 3. Yeah, it's a PlayStation 3 exclusive. um, And I would probably be safe to say that it's probably PlayStation's um, biggest exclusive title for the year, I would say. Hmm. and it's follow up to 2007's um, Uncharted Drake's Fortune, which was I still think is is one of the best games on the PlayStation 3 to date. Um, you know, very and as probably you saw from that trailer, very sort of cinematic feel to it. Um, you know, and it's got lots of sort of swashbuckling, adventuring, and 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 you know, it's very. Um, you know, Tomb Raider is in the fact that it's, you know, you're searching for treasure and you've got, um, you know, things to climb. And and I think Uncharted um, 2 really ups the ante a huge deal um, on the first one. Hmm. I've seen I've seen this one advertised quite extensively yeah. on the web. Uh, it's interesting Sony seem to be uh, promoting it um, quite differently to other games as well. Yeah, well, um, I think it's, it's because this is the... Uh, you know, this is the key one I think for the year, and mm. and it's and it's it's got a lot riding on it because it's you know it's an exclusive title, but it's done by a um, developer called Naughty Dog, which are a well-known Sony developer, um, and they've done some brilliant you know games on the PlayStation Two and and those sorts of things, um, and so I think Sony are going to pull out all the stops for this one and really get it out there as you know. Um, the flagship title for the for the PlayStation Three, and you know, if 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 you own a PlayStation, then you've you know you've got to have this one because it's um you know, the one that's really gonna, I think, graphically um, push the PS3 a lot too. Yeah, so it really does does use the full resource of the machine. Yeah, I think I mean I I don't like in terms of way much it's using, but it's certainly visually from a visual standpoint, um, it's very impressive. I mean there are um. You know, something that impressed me about Uncharted 2 was it's very crisp and, you know, colours are vibrant and, um, you know, it's just the little touches that we've seen in games now, you know, that when, you know, if, if a character um, like um, Nathan Drake, who's the lead character, if he um, walks through a river or, you know, walks through a swimming pool in, in, in one of the cities that he visits, you know, you see his clothes are wet and then they progressively dry and water drips off them and it's just little ambient you know, little things that that make a, a game world more immersive and more alive, and and something that yeah I was impressed with in Charter Two was that it's the colours are very vibrant, it's very visually crisp and clear and vibrant, and and it just goes really well with the storytelling. Would the um, would the gameplay be familiar to people who used to play the old Tomb Raider games? Oh, very much so. Yeah, yeah, very much so. I mean, that probably in terms of gameplay, it doesn't. Um, and reinvent anything. Um, you know, the, the basic premise is, is that you're going to be, um, this, you know, gunplay, so you're fighting enemies, you're shooting this melee combat, so you can punch at enemies, you can take them down stealth wise. But there's lots of lots of climbing, lots and lots of climbing. You know, you're going to be climbing um, bombed out villages in Nepal, tall, tall buildings, you're going to be climbing signs, you're going to be climbing ice flows, um, you know, in it the sounds, Himalayas. Sounds, it sounds like you're over climbing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of climbing. I must admit, there's a there's a lot more climbing in this one, I think. Um, yeah. And sometimes, sometimes you do think, yeah, there's a lot of climbing, a lot of stuff to do. But part of the, um, I think, the impact of this is one one sequence um, that you've got to climb an extremely tall building, and you actually get a really great vista view of the sort of Tibetan Nepalese vil- uh, village. Um, 
that you're in, and it's it it just shows you that you know there are benefits of climbing. But yeah, that you know you be prepared to climb a lot. You know, um, you know mm. signs, buildings, trains. Um, yeah, lot, lots of climbing in this one. Yeah, uh, does it um, does it mix in uh, sort of cinematic sequences in between the gameplay as well? Yeah, well, I mean, these days a lot of games are putting a lot more emphasis into the you know the cinematic little cutscenes, um, and they're coming more prevalent. And I, I guess you could really look at this one as it's as almost a blockbuster movie type take on it. Um, you know the the cutscenes or little cinematic movies fit in seamlessly, and they and they move the story along. Um, and another nice thing is that there's a, there's a seamless seamless progression from the end game movie to the actual gameplay. So it, there's you know there's no big low times. It's fairly just seamless uh, flow through. So you know and and they're done impressively as well. Um, so the whole the whole package is just a you know it's a really tightly done. Um, visual feast. Mm. Could you see what yourself completing see. it? Do you want to complete it? Oh, definitely. I mean, I've I've um, had it since Thursday afternoon, and I've already spent a couple of late nights, um, you know, to one thirty on Saturday morning, and sort of till twelve thirty this morning. Yeah. And I think it's it's you know I think it's made up of twenty four chapters, sort of in chapters, um, and each chapter has you know a heading and a sort of adventure. Um, and you know, I think it's one of those games that the um, you know, despite some niggles, you know that you know there are, as, as every game's got niggles. You know, that perhaps there's too much climbing. There's, um, you know, some of the the boss fights. The bosses seem to be really bullet sponges. So you know, up until you hit a boss fight, you can, you know, a couple of shots, two, three shots, and the guys are down. And then suddenly you get an enemy who can soak up the bullets. Yeah. Um, and that sort of that sort of kills the realism a wee bit. Um, but you know, those those and you know, there's a graphical graphical glitch, which you, you know you're going to expect. But I think in terms of um, the whole story, the stories, I think, which is a really strong the story, which draws you in. You know, it's a really compelling story, and I think it's that sort of game that I think once you start it, well, I'm certainly finding it hard to put down. You know, you sort of think, "How about one blurry?" I just think, "Oh, gee, you know, I really better, <laughs> I, I really better turn it off because you know I've got work and you know, in a few hours in the morning." But, yeah. You know, I, I can. I've heard, you know, I heard that some people are playing it, you know, for a long period, and this is what. You will because the story is so compelling. You know the story moves it along. So I think um, that's a huge kudos to it because the story is so strong that it does compel you to want to keep playing it. Yeah. So the makers have really, really done their job. You're doing very well to um, to talk about it at this time of the morning <laughs> <laughs> after playing it all night. Oh, you know, all you need is a few hours sleep, don't you? Then you sort of uh, <laughs> get back to work. But I mean, I think that's that's you know, if you if you can find a game that will do that, that yeah. You know, as you know, some games you play, you sort of think, meh, meh, you know, okay, play it for a couple of hours and put it down. But I think, you know, even, even in this one when there was situations, and there are, some, there are a lot of environmental puzzles, um, you know, some of the sections, like you'll have to um, work out how to trip levers. So obviously back to this sort of Tomb Raider thing, we had to stand on, um, you know, things to drop pillars and do all sorts of things. So there's lots of environmental puzzles. And even... Um, when it's sometimes it's not exactly clear where you're supposed to go, you know that did frustrate me sometimes. Mm. Um, you know, even after some some puzzles that I died six or seven times, I still kept on saying, "And you know, try it again, try it again." And then, sure enough, you can get it. Right. Um, so yeah, I, th- I think there's something about it that will keep people wanting to play through it to the end and just just see what happens at the end. Mm. Okay, well, Uncharted Two, it's on the PlayStation Three. It is out now. Yes, it is. Yes, it came out uh, 15th, I think. Mm -hmm. So it is out now, and it's only on the PlayStation 3. Great. Geron Campbell, you can um, hit him up on his blog at uh, stuff.co.nz under the technology section, and also on Twitter as well, twitter.com forward slash gamejunkienz. Gerard, talk to you next week. My pleasure. Thank you, Emma. 29 minutes past nine now. Kiwi. I will drench for.